Welcome to Game Data. This week, Apple announced their first laptops with M2 chips. Well, the main story of those is that they're a bit faster, a bit more expensive, and allow for a bit more memory on board. I wanted to take a moment to talk about something you might want to take into consideration if you're tempted to get one of those devices. The fact that I'm technically on my second M1 Pro MacBook Pro, because my first one crapped out on me in less than two months of use. Yeah, for as much as I've heard of MacBooks being long-lasting devices, it's a bit awkward that the first time I hand Apple money, they give me a computer that couldn't even stay alive long enough for me to post my initial review about it. Still, it gave me an opportunity to see what troubleshooting looks like on a MacBook and how Apple handles these situations. All of which homes in on how I can simultaneously love the heck out of my computer and think it's fundamentally flawed beyond recommendation for some folks. A lot of that sentiment will also undoubtedly carry over to the new M2 devices, since they carry the same issues as my MacBook Pro. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. If you haven't already, go back and watch my previous videos on this device. I have a base model MacBook Pro with M1 Pro and spent a good chunk of time running it through the ringer to see if it actually lived up to the hype. Those videos discuss none of what I'm getting into today, but they do provide some overview on what the M1 Pro MacBook is like in use. Okay, with that out of the way, let's get into it. First up, you might be wondering what happened to my first MacBook. Well, a few things really, but if you need two words to Google for a summary, try kernel panic. I first experienced the issue about a month and a half after getting the device when trying to render a video to post on Twitter. The video itself was super simple, but the MacBook crashed hard, like really hard, to the extent that it wouldn't even turn on for over a full day, and we had to post a filler video to keep our channel schedule going without any gaps. Now, I'm experienced enough with computers to not panic in those si sorts of situations. It was stressful since it meant that the video we were 95% done with had to be delayed a full week, but well, whatever. After 10 plus hours sitting on a charger, it at least turned itself back on so that I could back up my files and try to recreate the problem to get more info. Reliably, from then onward, anything more intense than basic tasks, we're talking rendering videos, messing around in After Effects, downloading games from Steam, resulted in the laptop restarting itself, often three to four times in a row. The amount of times I heard the Apple startup sound randomly while working still leaves me a bit nervous to this day. Eventually, I accepted that this problem was... <laughs> it wasn't going away, and tried all the typical troubleshooting steps I could think of and find online. I uninstalled all third-party apps one by one, ran diagnostics in recovery mode, reinstalled macOS several times, disabled all apps on startup, rebooted in safe mode, and nothing seemed to work. And the problem kept getting worse with crashes no longer even requiring the computer to be put under load. The only real indicator I had to the cause was the occasional error report indicating a CPU panic error every few reboots. Looking around online, that seems to describe a known issue with M1 MacBooks called kernel panic, in which the computer is basically so overwhelmed the only thing it can do is shut itself down and, hopefully, turn itself back on later. While rare for most people, the issue seems to mostly show up as occasional restarts overnight for computers left in sleep mode. There didn't seem to be any clear-cut solution for the problem, plus I couldn't find anyone posting about it completely wrecking their computers to the extent that it did mine. So, I was kind of at a loss. After exhausting all my options, I did what anyone else would do in my situation. 
write a frustrated Twitter post calling out Apple for building a laptop that could fail so easily. Funnily enough, that actually helped find a sort of solution. Whatever bot or support team Apple has monitoring their mentions almost immediately commented on the post to get more info via DMs. And, you know, kudos to them. They were actually super helpful walking me through all of the troubleshooting steps a second time. Of course, none of those steps worked, but after the crappy service I received from Dell from my last laptop, I appreciated the good, convenient customer service they were offering. Ultimately, it all resulted in me scheduling an appointment at the Genius Bar. Even then, you know, super nice dude at the Genius Bar who also spent half an hour trying to turn on my laptop, which had, again, perma-crashed, but it gave me enough time to show off my Surface Duo 2 and highly recommend that he get one himself because <laughs> they're just awesome. At the end of the day, the laptop was dead and the only thing they could really realistically do was send it in for repairs, which I kinda expected going in after everything else that I did. Within four or five days of leaving the laptop with them, I got it back in the mail and it now works without a hitch. I've rendered a couple videos, played various games, and even redid all the stress tests from my previous video without seeing any issues, luckily. That's great, right? Well, not exactly. I mean, yes, it's great that they were able to restore my device to a working state after I spent several weeks worried that my laptop was just bricked. You know, the end result couldn't be better. However, there's a, a very awkward undertone to all of this. Firstly, while not extremely common, there do seem to be more than a few people experiencing kernel panic issues, specifically with Apple's M1 devices. This indicates that there might be something flawed about their designs, which results in the SOCs, or something else in the logic board, getting a bit too overwhelmed and needing to restart itself to restore things to proper order. If you've used Windows laptops before, you'd have seen something similar with a blue screen of death. Although those tend to be sporadic in specific circumstances on public builds and don't usually reduce the computer to a non-functional state. All the crashes also aren't great for the computers that cost as much as these and could create issues as more people sink more money into and rely more heavily on Apple Silicon computers. I mean, I'm fortunate enough to live on Chicago's north side and have an Apple store a short walk from my house. I also have a perfectly good desktop and about 10 other laptops lying around to work on while my MacBook was dead. If neither of those things were true, this channel would have been on hold for at least a full three weeks while I figured out what the heck was going on with my MacBook and found a way to ship the laptop to Apple for repairs. At the time of posting, I only have about 300 subscribers, so it's not necessarily life or death that I get a video out, but if I were running a larger business off this computer, or were, say, back in grad school and suddenly lost a month of research data because some inherent system flaw, that'd really suck. Especially since repairs are insanely costly. Obviously, I'm still under warranty and didn't have to pay anything for the repairs, but the same problem a few years from now, depending on my Apple Care status, would cost about a third of this laptop's price to fix. Given Apple's varied degrees of hostility toward third-party repair shops, anyone relying on their MacBook to work as expected or just confused as to what's even happening essentially has no other option but to pay the heavy premium directly to Apple to solve a problem that likely wasn't their fault in the first place. You know, not to mention, in all seriousness, the fact that they'd send me an invoice listing the out of warranty price at all for a repair on a laptop less than three months old seems pretty awkward. It feels kind of like they want me to be thankful for the steep discount and it rubs me entirely the wrong way. But, okay, I guess all that could be somewhat excusable for a specialized repair service. Sure, if I were to drop my cynicism for a second, 
Apple does employ folks who are trained to know exactly how to repair each of their devices to a better degree than me fumbling through an iFixit repair guide for the first time. However, the actual repair for this computer was to replace the full logic board. That means the motherboard, the SOC, the RAM, the storage, basically everything that makes this computer a computer. Due to how these Apple Silicon computers are set up, a failure in one area of the computer means basically replacing the entire system. CPU panic? Replace the computer. Storage failure? Replace the computer. RAM crapping out because a miniature black hole opened up for a nanosecond in the space between bytes being accessed in order to render the lackluster Sonic Frontiers trailer? Replace the computer. Regardless of how good the performance is or how you personally feel about Apple, we should all agree that there's something problematic about a repair not only being non-self-serviceable, but also requiring the whole computer to basically be thrown out. Not only is this bad environmentally, but it doesn't spell well for the overall longevity of these computers, given that those parts don't tend to be made publicly available without jumping through some complex hoops which place even the best repair shops in a bind. So, where does this leave me? Obviously, I'll be using my laptop for more than a few years and will report back if there are any more technical difficulties. Despite my mixed feelings about this scenario, this computer does slot into my workflow perfectly to an extent, where selling this for something better built around repair standards would leave me lacking in either power or battery life. For you though, if you're planning to buy one of these laptops, know that this issue is a thing. As likely as you might be to never experience anything related to kernel panics or weird bugs which kill your computer, you might also want to hedge your investment by getting Apple Care with your machine. I know, it sucks, and you shouldn't really need it, but that seems like the price you might need to pay to use one of these first generation devices. Alternatively, waiting might be good. As I mentioned at the top of this video, M2 laptops were just announced and M2 Pro laptops will likely follow next year, if Apple keeps up their current cadence. There's always the possibility that the core kernel panic issues are even less prevalent on the newer hardware, or even as macOS Ventura starts to roll out. If true, your patients could be rewarded with a technically more stable device and a bit more power. Unfortunately, that doesn't really solve the core issue to these designs, which is the lack of self-repairability. Alternatively, alternatively, you might also consider just not giving Apple your money at all and going with a laptop that's more repairable and upgradable. Framework laptops are mentioned a lot these days for repairability due to their incredibly modular design. Combined with the fact that they're now coming with upgradable 12th gen Intel processors, they might be a worthwhile look if you're looking to buy a new machine that's going to last a few years. M1 Pros will still likely be more powerful than any of the CPUs offered in a framework laptop or most laptops these days, but as I've mentioned, M1 Pros also leave less control when something goes wrong. Even if you're personally just looking for the fastest laptop you can possibly get, I think it's worthwhile to consider what your options will be if something goes wrong with your computer before investing large sums of money. But those are my thoughts. What do you all think? Does all this talk about costly kernel panics make you think twice about getting a MacBook? What laptop would you personally recommend for anyone looking for something a bit more upgradable? Let me know down in the comments. And as always, feel free to like this video if you found it helpful or informative and get subscribed for other non-MacBook related videos in the future. I'm currently finishing a script for a dual screen phone which has some interesting parallels to the first round of foldable screen phones which came out a few years back. Uh, it's gonna be an awesome video, but that's all for now. Until next time, catch you later. ...and highly recommend that he get one for himself. At the end of the day though, the laptop was dead and... 
resurrected as a cat. Yo! Go away, taco. Okay, I'm gonna cut because it's 